Hellbent, the guild mechanic of Rakdos from original Ravnica block. Cards that do things when you have no cards in hand. Hidden without keyword text, but present as a searing blade. And like Lord Rakdos himself, it returns. On Innistrad. Hellbent Vampires is a fast aggro deck that utilizes discard mechanics, madness, and of course Hellbent to create a competitive deck that's still affordable at only about $50. With Hellbent Vampires, you are always the aggressor. It is always correct to attack, even if you're not trading profitably. There's also a bunch of direct damage to finish things off, for those instances when your creatures can't. Even though Hellbent is not a keyworded ability in this set, make no mistake, this is a Hellbent deck. Your goal is to discard everything as fast as possible. You have big payoffs for being Hellbent, having no cards in your hand, such as Lupine Prototype, Asylum Visitor, and Blood Hall Priest. To achieve this, there's a lot of cards that allow you to discard many cards at once, so you can get Hellbent hella fast. Kids still say hella, right? They must. Let's get hella into it. Lupine Prototype costs only two mana for a 5-5 wolf construct. The catch? Lupine Prototype can't attack or block unless a player has no cards in hand. Well, that player is going to be you by turn three, and Lupine Prototype won't be the only thing swinging in. Blood Hall Priest is so overpowered in this deck. For a red, a black, and two, or a red and black and one for madness, you get a 4-4 vampire where whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, if you have no cards in hand, then it also does two damage to target creature or player. Being hellbent with even just one of these in play ends games fast. Major pressure. Asylum Visitor is a 3-1 vampire wizard for one black and one. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, you draw a card and you lose one one life. Drawing one card in exchange for a life is one of the best deals in all of magic. So much so that the original source of this, Necropotence, has to be banned in Legacy. It also has Madness for two, meaning this card may get discarded and then hit the battlefield instead of the graveyard, all while earning a discard benefit. What benefits do we reap from discard? To start, there's Heir of Falconrath, a 2-1 two, for two that lets you discard a card to transform it into a 3-1 flyer. Ravenous Bloodseeker is a 1-3 for a red and 1 that lets you discard to give it plus 2, negative 2. Collective Brutality is only a black and 1, and then lets you escalate by discarding extra cards. The value here is unreal, especially when discarding is what you want to be doing. Give a creature negative 2, negative 2, pull a card from your opponent's hand, or just have that opponent lose 2 life while you gain 2 life. Why not do all 3? And of course, Stromkirk Condemned, where for 2 black mana you get a 2-2 Vampire that lets you discard a card to give all vampires plus one plus one until end of turn. The deck also runs three copies of Olivia mobilized for war. She's a 3-3 flying for three, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature. It gains haste and becomes a vampire. As you can see, sequencing is very important here. But are you seeing the trend yet? Hellbent heavy hitters, discard outlets that give you a benefit when you discard, helping you get hellbent, and cards with madness that means you might get an extra value and extra gas from that discard as well. What madness cards are we running? Incorrigible Youth says a converted mana cost of five, but if we discard it, the madness cost is only one red and two for a 4-3 vampire with haste. Avacyn's Judgment's madness cost makes it amazing board wipe, or targeted removal, or just direct damage through a fireball to our opponent's face to finish them off. And Fiery Temper is a good old-fashioned lightning bolt when cast for its madness cost. We're only in two colors, so the mana base is simple. Four foreboding runes, four smoldering marsh, eleven swamps, and four mountains. Normally I say it's okay to cut a few of those dual lands for budgetary purposes, but in this deck I strongly advise you to keep the mana base exactly as I have it here. What about the sideboard? Here's your guide to our sideboard. Up against Eldrazi, sideboard in infinite obliteration. Up against another aggro deck, side in dead weight, grasp of darkness, and ultimate price. Up against 
Impulsed Control Sidon Duress. Now there's a chance your meta might see some Delirium decks, and if you really, really want to pay more to upgrade this to become even more competitive than it already is, then the sideboard can be upgraded with three Kalitas Traders of Get. But given the price on these and the limited need, I'd not include them unless you've already got them. But that's the upgrade. Upgrade by putting three Kalitas in the sideboard. Other than that, you're good to go. Hella good to go. This deck is ideal for new and returning players, as well as those just looking to play a competitive deck that's not often on the radar. Game day is coming up, and I cannot recommend this enough or especially if you are looking to get started in standard but don't know where to begin, this is where you begin with Hellbent Vampires. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out over at patreon.com where your donations allow this channel to continue. I literally could not do this without your support, so thank you. Red Green Werewolves is a powerful, fun, and affordable deck for Friday Night Magic Standard. While not exactly Tier 1, the deck is nonetheless a great entry point for players looking to begin playing Magic every week at their local game store.